Okay, welcome to the tutorial for selection tools in Photoshop CS6. What we're going to do is we're going to um, basically learn how we can use the different tools to cut things out, uh, duplicate them in the same image, or copy them into a new file, and kind of compose, add them all together. So the first selection tool I'm going to show you is this tool right up here on the top left. It's the Rectangular Marquee Tool. If you just click on that, drag over, it creates a box shape, and if you go up to your Move Tool up here, the shortcut on the keyboard is V. I can now move that around and it has cut that out. Okay, I'm going to do Command Z to undo and then Command D to deselect. You can also find the deselect up under the select menu. Okay, uh, if you click and hold down on the rectangular marquee tool, you're going to see the elliptical marquee tool, which lets you draw uh, an ellipse like an oval kind of shape. If you hold down the shift key on the keyboard, it keeps it constrained to be a perfect circle but I'm going to draw an ellipse roughly around my head, push V to go back to the Move tool, and you, and you can see I cut this piece out. Okay, uh, Command D, deselect. Uh, there are a couple other different um, tools under here, but we're not going to probably use that one all too much. You've got another tool here called uh, the Lasso tool, and with this, I'm using a trackpad, so it's a little bit tricky, but if you have a mouse and uh, a steady hand, you can cut something out, and you literally just trace really closely around oops let's track by the stuff uh, trace really closely around what you want to have release the mouse when you're done uh, dragging around your object and then you can cut something out whoa this trackpad wants to shimmy me around a little bit sorry about that make you a little dizzy okay um, but I've got me uh, now cut out here and you can see that's pretty good okay uh, command D to deselect and let me See, that's kind of bothering me. Whoa. Okay, close enough. Um, now, the tools that are going to be really, really excellent are going to be the Magic Wand tool and the Quick Select tool. We'll use these a whole lot. The Magic Wand tool selects an entire area that's of a similar color or value. So if I click just once back here in this whole board area here, it grabbed everything that was white, and you can see went back over here. But it started to get to be a... Uh, it became a darker white back here, so it decided to not grab that. If I want to add that to it, I can hold down the shift key, and you'll see the uh, cursor adds a plus sign to it, and I can click, and it adds to the selection, so I can progressively add areas to it. Okay, I'm going to deselect there, and uh, actually let me go back to that. Uh, I'm selecting all this stuff that is white back here, kind of for a reason, and I could go back here, select everything here, and what I really want is my face, but you notice I selected the background. If I go to select inverse, that'll select the opposite of what I just had. So I had the background, now it's selected just myself, and as well this kind of nonsense over here. Now one of the more advanced things you can do is you can click and hold down, go back to the uh, rectangular marquee tool, and if I hold down the option key, Okay, Option makes a little minus come up on the cursor. You can see the minus appears there when I tap that, and uh, Shift makes the plus appear, right? If I want to subtract from the selection, I can hold down minus and drag out a little box here. You can see now this has become deselected. So I could deselect all of this stuff back here with the rectangular marquee tool. Get rid of that little dry erase marker there. Okay, and then I could go back, I could switch back to uh, my lasso tool even, and hold down option, turn to the minus, select that little area that I don't want, and then release, and you can see it took that part away. You can even come in here and get real detailed on there. Okay, so now I've got just my whole body, right? It's pretty good. Okay, uh, the next tool under the magic wand, if you click and hold down, you'll get to the quick selection tool. And this tool is really fantastic. We're going to use this one a whole lot. Basically, uh, I could go through and select all the background, try to do the whole background situation, but I'm going to go directly for me. You can see it kind of just, you just click and drag over the area that you like, and it kind of, it's pretty smart. It like goes and jumps to what you want. You can see it missed the lens on my glasses because it doesn't stand out as well, but I could go there, kind of grab that. And you can also see, if we look at this area here, I'm going to zoom in. Whoa, zoomed in very far. Uh, if we go to this section right here, you can see it's got that little blue area. If I hold Option, again, it subtracts from the selection. I can pull that away. Okay. Now I can do Command-minus to zoom out. 
Command plus to zoom in, Command minus to zoom out. Good trick, right? Uh, and you can see it's a pretty good selection of me. Let's just say for some reason while I was uh, selecting me, I accidentally went over here and kind of grabbed some of that white area. Okay. Uh, again, all you do is hold down minus, pull it back. You know, even if I'm minus too far away, just release minus and it automatically turns back to a plus. But the more you do that, uh, the more confused it gets if you keep kind of going back and forth over an area. So at a certain point, it might be helpful just to Command D, deselect, and create a new selection. Uh, just because this tool, it's so fast, it works so well. And uh, if it gets confused, it's uh, sometimes worth it just to restart. Okay, so now I've got a pretty good selection of my body here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Refine Edge button that comes up here at the top. If you're on your Move tool, or any of these uh, any of these other tools down here, it won't be up there. But if you're on any of the selection tools, it appears up here. Okay. So on my I'm on my uh, quick select tool, I click Refine Edge, and what this is going to do is going to mask out the background entirely around my selection, and I can choose what that background looks like. It could be white, it could be on black. I'm going to do it on black since it was already on white and I want to see how much of that white board is kind of showing up on the edge here. And you can see it starts off sort of jagged. doesn't look like too too great. And what I'm going to do is kind of adjust these different tools to soften it out. So I brought the radius up and you can see it brought a lot of that jaggedness right out of here. I can bring that back down. I can smooth it. Kind of again brings out some of the jaggedness. Uh, feathering. A little bit goes a long way, but it kind of like fades it to be a transparency, like over the edges there. And if I set it up a little bit, it kind of softens things. If I set it up way high, you'll see what it really does. It kind of goes crazy, uh, where it just really, really kind of like softens things out, right? So a little bit of that goes a long way. And if for some reason the uh, edge is like too far away from my head or too close to the uh, head, I can shift the edge in or I can shift the edge out okay and if I have that little halo effect there I'm gonna shift the edge in just a little bit and now you can see I've got a really smooth uh, nice selection of myself so I'm gonna click OK and it looks like everything goes away from the refine edge but in fact it's actually kept track of that and from here I can move it around or if I want to which is gonna be important for our first project here I'm gonna create a new file and the size right now doesn't matter I'm gonna do a uh, default US paper. Click OK. Now I went in this tab, this image is here, I can go to edit, copy, I can click over to this tab and go to edit, paste. Now the shortcut for that here is Command C and to paste is Command V. They're right next to each other. Uh, okay, so we go over here. I've pasted this. Now with my move tool, I can move it around but it just kind of sits there, okay, uh, in terms of uh, size. If I want to make it bigger or smaller, i got to go up here to Show Transform Controls, and now you see these boxes appear around it, and I can stretch it out and make it larger. Now, if I want to keep it in proportion, just like I did with that uh, uh, ellipse selection tool here, is if I hold Shift, it keeps it in constrained proportion, so it doesn't, like, squash my head out all weird, right? So hold down Shift, drag it up to where I want it to be, can put it where I'd like it to be and then when I'm done I just hit the return key okay and I must do that if you're in a transformation and you want to go and do something else it won't let me do these other tools unless I actually apply the transformation so you can either hit cancel which would you know put it back to how it was or apply it and make it uh, how you want it to be so here it is again if you want to rotate things you take the move tool and put it right outside of this corner or any of the corners really it's got to be like a little ways outside there you can rotate and again escape to cancel or return to enter okay so that is a really basic explanation of selection tools and you're going to go through and grab a series of images and kind of collect them put them all together and stack them up and create your own composition one last thing before we go I'm going to show you uh, how to kind of manage layers and if you go over here on the side here you're going to see the layers tab open that up and you'll notice right now in this image I had a background image and then I copied and pasted my face from this image in there. This one only has a background image. Okay, With these two layers um, I'm going to create actually a duplicate layer of layer 1 just to show you a quick example. If I 
uh, hold down control on the keyboard and click with the mouse I can go to duplicate layer and now hit OK there are two layers that are exactly the same if I move this over you'll see there's one behind it okay gives you a little preview right right here um, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate that just so we can see them a little bit differently okay now with these layers the layer that is uh, towards the top of the screen here is going to be above this layer so you can see this layer covers up that layer can make it really big and you know you could barely even see that layer back there or whatever um, if I wanted to make this big layer one copy here behind layer one Gotta apply my transformation. I can click and drag it below, and now layer one itself is on top. Really good thing to do is label your layers. If you hold down control, click on the layer there, you can go to, uh, oh, it's not in here, right here. Uh, double click right on where it says layer one, and you can call this small me. And over here, I can double click on this, call this big me. Okay. Now, this really is going to come in handy later when you're trying to um, deal with a whole bunch of layers. You might end up, some files might have, you know, 50, 100 layers. The first project we're going to do is going to have uh, at least 15. Okay. Okay. So these are on separate layers. Again, this one is above that one. If for some reason I wanted to make it sort of transparent, I can go to uh, Opacity. Bring the Opacity down. You can kind of see through it a little bit. Right. And there's different blend modes as well, and we'll kind of get into these a little bit more later, but these kind of determine how it kind of mixes with the layers beneath it. Okay. And uh, don't forget to save frequently. This will be Brant Yelling. Okay. So we've covered selection tools, we've covered a little bit of layer management, and that should get you pretty, pretty well set off for the first project. Thanks for watching.